He's not talking about you know, cutting people's throats, beating them over the head, stealing from them, putting them in gas chambers, stuff like that. He's not talking about that. And I don't see, so the evil that he's seeing is uh, mostly social evils of one kind or another, or personal sexual issues of marriage and uh, who you're going to sleep with in bed or something like that. So I don't think his evil is much more simple level than the one we have to face in our world. And that was a simpler time, it looks like. So I'm the poet of wickedness, too. He means the kind of things, if you're a Catholic, you'd probably go to confess in the confessional. That's about the wickedness that he's talking about. Uh, so, in 24, then, Walt Whitman of Cosmos, of Manhattan, the sun, and again, turbulent, fleshy, sensual, eating, drinking, breeding, no sentimentalists. And we did this, unscrew the doors, the locks from the door, and unscrew the doors from their jams, and so on. That's where we left all. I speak the password primeval, I give the sign of democracy. So, like George Bush claims to be doing, Whitman believes absolutely in democracy. And his religion is democracy, American democracy. I don't see any other religion here exactly. All the other religions come second to that. Uh, that's why I'm doing it, because I think this is, uh, I don't think that Americans believe this, we all have little religions of our own too, but his religion is America, and if you, um, maybe it's not a good religion, uh, but uh, if you remember 9-11 and the outpouring of things after 9-11, it really did look like what he was talking about. Look at that, for instance, in section 24, in the middle. I believe in the flesh and the appetite. Seeing, hearing, feeling are miracles. So these things are not evil in the appetites. We've always heard the appetites of flesh were evil, not for him. Body is the evil. It's miraculous. Divine I am inside and out. This is the answer to the people who separate the body from the soul and consider the soul good and the body evil, not, not him. But he doesn't accept, as I said, the Hindu, you know, mortify the body, or the Socratic or Christian mortify the body if he reads the soul. No, no, so I think he's more modern than that. He doesn't get any of his credit with that he do because uh, I think this is more the way most people actually live their lives today. I may be wrong, but I think so. No one thinks their body is evil. Very few do anyway. Uh, judging by the gyms that we all have and people all working out and, you know, toning their bodies and doing all they can to get the thing, you know, moving the right way and avoiding foods that uh, pollute the, the flesh and so on and so forth. I would say people are totally, um, totally um, obsessed with their bodies, not, <laughs> they don't consider them low. <coughs> they consider them perishable and therefore they want to keep them going in the best way possible. So these old religions don't really measure up to these issues. At least that's what Whitman is saying. And I think many Americans probably, if they were fair and could see into it, would probably agree with him. Not everything about him. Divine I am, inside and out, soul and body. And I make holy whatever I touch or untouch. Anything I touch is holy or untouch body. And then, that is a line for the ages. You may not agree with him, because you might put the odor in on but the scent of these armpits, aroma finer than prayer. I mean, who would have said that? You know, how can you imagine someone in 1850 saying that? I think it's hard to imagine, isn't it? Uh, how many cultures could produce that? That's, the, that's the, what this American culture produced. I think that's an incredible achievement. I mean, I don't happen to agree with him, maybe. I mean, I don't really want to smell his smelly armpits. Uh, but he is saying something. He is saying something. I'm not ashamed of my smelly armpits. You know, I can tough up. It's as good as your prayer. You know? This is natural me. You don't like me? You know, go take a powder, basically. Yeah. Can he also be using that as kind of sweated armpits, though, hard work he does? Kind of like a... Do you think? I don't get that feeling that he likes to work hard. 
He's a guy who likes to lean and loaf at his ease, observing his spirit. He can avoid work if he wants to. So I, I don't really get that. But if you want to see that, take a look. I don't have the final to say here. But since you asked me, uh, you know, your view is as good as mine, I would still think that I didn't get that feeling. I just got to hear Smell my armpit. And uh, you don't like it? Well, it's as good as anything that you'll find anywhere else that may be better, and it's holy as well, because I am holy inside and out. And you are too, not just him. He thinks he's not just talking about himself. He wants to encourage you to feel that you are worth something, your whole self. Not, and you don't really have to squirt that, that feeling around yourself to make yourself accepted. Not to him. Maybe you feel like that, too. But he doesn't think you have to. You stink, he'll accept you. That's okay. You've got bad breath. I mean, it'd be nicer maybe you do something about it, but heck, if your teeth are, you know, molding and decaying and so on, not a heck of a lot you can do about it. You know, that's just the way God made uh, the mortification of the flesh, if you want. But, uh, you know, uh, Whitman's not going to run away from you anyway. Maybe a lot of other people might, but he is he doesn't think you're worse than Rockefeller because your breath smells, or uh, Trump or somebody who uh, got some weird problems himself, I think. Okay, so he goes on again. This is a religious poem.